Hey everyone, Ash here, and it's time to read some more bad fan fiction. This is Forbidden Fruit, The Temptation of Edward Cullen by Becky Mac 666 Let's get started. And, hey guys, this is the new improved version of my story. Hope it's better this time. BTW, I am young and have dyslexia. I find spelling hard, but it's meant to be informal, okay? No criticism, please. Tis story goes out to my BF, Zach. Kisses, and my best friend, Tiffy. Love you, girl. Edward is our, go our god. We want to sex him good. Lots of exes. Love and blood, Becky Mac. Lots more exes. Update. I have a proofreader, and I have cleaned up the spelling and grammar on this chat tour a hell of a lot as you will see. Thank you, Vicky. I will be improving improving the next chapters soon. Chapter one Alantia Alantina Hey, my name's Alantina Rebecca Lauren, but everyone calls me Tina or just plain Tia. I am six I am a sixteen year old girl and I live in Forks, Washington. My hair is long and pale like spun gold and skims to my waist like a, a pale shimmering amber mist. My eyes are deep forest forget me forget me not blue and my delicate finchers are lily white and pure as the winter snow and moonlight. I have been told I have been told by loads of sleazy sleazy ugly horny guys that I am real pretty and look like a model or a bunny girl. Some of the guys who like me are really old and try to make up with me. It's disgusting and weird. But basically a lot of the girls I meet all tell a different story. They, ask, they say I am too ivory white and ethereal, ethereal and too skinny and that I look anorexic, which I don't care about. But I, but I think it's seriously disrespectful to people with real eating disorders. BTW, I, I'm so totally not anorexic. I eat loads. I just never gain weight, and I'm not thin enough to be anorexic anyways. I think they're just being biatches, especially this one ratty brain called Ellie Mayfair, who I hope freaking dies in pain with shit on her face. Sorry, I'm not really such a batch, but she is so horrible. If you bet her, you'd think the same. Anyways, I'm quite tall and slim, and quite tall and slim, but with really big boobs that I used to hate because they look noticeable on my slender body and draw much attention, but now I like them and don't care who stares at me. I have a lip ring and recently put black and indigo in and magenta streaks in my pale blonde hair. I smell like mint and cinnamon. I wear mostly black and hot pink, deep purple and neon blue and listen to cool music. It is my first day at school in Forks and I, as I just moved here to live with my new foster parents, Dave and Marie. They are nice and very wholesome, sweet people, but it's not like having a real family. I have been hurt too many times to let people close to me, and I don't talk to them very much. My real mom died when I was born, and I never knew my real dad. I sometimes wonder what he's like, and I will never, and, and if I will ever get to met him. Dave gave me a ride to school and I smiled faintly as he wished me good luck and I got out of the car and went into the school. Loads of people freaking stared at me as I walked down the hall. I was wearing tight black leather pants with silver chains at the waist and a red fishnet like top and you could see my black lacy bra through it. I ignored whispers and, and the big pink cheerleader imbeciles pointing at me. I was used to it and I paid no at attention to the guys asking desperately for my number. Like hell I'd even look at the horny, li horny little donkeys and told a ditzy blonde cheerleader called Jessica to STFU when she called me a freak. 
Next time she tries anything, I'll hit her in the eye because no one messes with me anymore. My first day, I was relay bored. I sat gazing out of the window into the gray cloud embittered sky for most of the morning. My teachers all looked at me disapproval, disapprovable, but said nothing because they probably knew I was a foster kid and a gothic and didn't want to upset me in case I cut them up as they slept. My ears are pierced four times. I have a tattoo of a scorpion, like S, my birth sign, on my ankle and a gothic cross on my shoulder. And on my hand, I have a weird birthmark in the shape of a seven-pointed star that I had all my life. You're probably wondering why I'm bothering to tell you this. Well, I'll tell you now. I am no order ordinary 16-year-old girl. I have a secret. A dark and forbidden secret which I am only just beginning to understand. When I sleep I hear whispers in another language even though I understand them at even though I understand them at the time when I wake up I can't remember it. I also see weird faces in my dreams that fade to nothingness when I open my eyes and I swear out of the corner of my eye my birthmark glows shocking bright gold and gets relay hot sometimes, but when I look properly, it's back to normal. Normal boarding scar color. I am really graceful like the running antelopes when I run very fast and I'm stronger and faster than most people. I just used to think I was relay athletic, but now I'm not so sure. I think there might be something else at work. Something so much more mysterious and airy. The truth, the truth hovers so softly on the brink of my memory sometimes, but if only I could remember the weird things that clung to the edge of my mind as I slept. I'm going to end here and continue the continue this story uh, in the next video. I don't want to go over the time limit, so there's not much left.